All right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. Happy Friday. I'm Kelmany Ducard. Sean and Emma have the day off. We have a lot to get to before the 4th of July weekend. But first, let's start this hour with the top stories that we're following on our national report rundown. President Biden now calling on Congress to end the filibuster in order to codify Roe v. Wade, but already some senators are voicing their opposition and President Biden's past remarks against ending abortion are now coming back to haunt him. Plus, judges nationwide halting states' efforts to ban abortion. This comes ahead of President Biden's meeting later today with governors in light of the Supreme Court's historic decision on Roe v. Wade. And the holiday weekend getaway is on and lesser flights grounded. Thousands of flights canceled and delayed nationwide with all of that, plus high gas prices preventing you from reaching your weekend destination? Well, President Biden is back in the States following his trip overseas, but not before using the international spotlight to address the battle over abortion rights here at home. I believe we have to codify Roe v. Wade in the law, and the way to do that is to make sure the Congress votes to do that. And if the filibuster gets in the way, it's like voting rights, it should be we provide an exception for this, for the, except the require an exception to the filibuster for this action. Well, joining us now is Tennessee Congresswoman Diana Harshberger. Congresswoman, welcome. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the renewed push to abolish the filibuster in order to codify Roe v. Wade. We did not see this with voting rights. We did not see this with Build Back Better, although there were more problems than just ending the filibuster to do that. What makes the Democrats think that they'll be successful in this attempt when it comes to abortion? Well, they're they're doing everything they can to push back on this Supreme Court decision. You know, nothing's off the table for the Democrats in the Biden administration. And, you know, they've talked about packing the courts. They've talked about getting rid of the filibuster. Let's just pray that we have uh, common sense minded senators who will say that's that's not a good idea and will stand up and voice their opposition to to this because they're not going to stop. They're going to continue to do what they can. If Elizabeth Warren suggests putting up abortion tents on federal land, you know, there's a problem. And the president's already seeing pushback on this right now to to codify Roe v. Wade. Uh, we want to take a look at this headline right here. Mansion Cinema dash Biden hopes for filibuster change on abortion. Uh, this is these are the same players. These are the same players when it comes to we're not going to fundamentally change the way, uh, you know, the Senate operates to end this filibuster, even if it is a worthy cause. I think Manchin and Cinema ha have made that pretty clear. Well, it's a sad state of affairs when you have one or two senators standing in the way of such a progressive agenda. This should really wake Americans up to say this can absolutely happen. And, you know, Manchin holds the golden key. He, you know, I've heard him call President Manchin, and there's good reason. He has stood in the way of so many of these crazy ideas that uh, the progressives want to implement. And if it wasn't for uh, Senator Manchin, Sen Senator Cinema, I don't know where we would be right now, but I hope they continue to push back. I hope they do not pay to the pressure that I know can happen because you see what almost happened to one of our Supreme Court justices. These people will stop at nothing, and then they won't condemn what is wrong and unlawful. It's been really interesting to see not only uh, the White House press secretary dodge questions about the president's stance on does he support abortions up until the moment of birth. And there's been a reluctance from a lot of Democrats to take a position on that. But when you look at a lot of the legislation that they're proposing or supporting, it's very clear that this is it's extreme legislation. It goes far beyond Roe v. Wade. It, it does support abortion up until the moment of birth. Um, why do you think that there's a hesitation for people to verbally express that when they're supporting legislation that embodies those exact measures? 
Well, they're listening to a segment of the population. Uh, you know, for 50 years, Roe v. Wade has been the law of the land. It was unconstitutional to start with, and the states should always have that right. There was never a constitutional right to abortion. But these people who were spewing this ideology have been taught that it was. And now, going back to the states, it's, it's not like you're getting rid of abortion. The states have uh, the opportunity to set re regulatory uh, ends on abortion at what time, if it's legal, if it's illegal, how you go about it, put parameters on it. But these people think, my body, my right. But, you know, what this does is it gives all these unborn babies a chance to live, a chance for life. And... Um, you know, these people, they hate it because they've been brainwashed over 35, 40, 50 years to think it was a constitutional right in the first place when that was absolutely wrong. Congresswoman, I want to get your reaction to another big Supreme Court ruling that we saw on Thursday, allowing the Biden administration to effectively end the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. I want to get your reaction on, you know, this especially as we see these record high encounters along our southern border. How is this going to impact the plot, the problem? I know, obviously, this is going to play out continuously in these lower courts. But in terms of controlling the influx of migrants that we've seen at the border, what impact do you see this having? Oh, I see it having a huge impact. It's almost like they put a sign up that says, come on in, because that Remain in Mexico policy was put in place by the Trump administration to have them go back until their asylum case was heard. Now they're going to have freedom to go wherever they want and maybe or maybe not show up for their court date. Chances are they won't. And I'm on Homeland Security. I see these numbers that we have 2.9 million illegal immigrants here in this country since Biden took over. And we also know that we have 700,000 gotaways that we don't know where they came from, where they're, they've gone or who they are. And if they come to the border in camo, they're not here to find a job. And knowing how many people have been caught on the terrorist watch list should make everyone fearful. Now, how many have come over and we don't know? The burden it's going to put on our health care system, our school system, is going to be unbelievable. We already see that. Tennessee Congresswoman Diana Harshbarger, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.